In this video, we'll talk about another type of integration by parts problem where it can be hard to see that you're making progress as you're trying to solve it, but eventually you end up being able to solve the integral you're looking for at the end of the problem. And I like to call these circular integration by parts problems, and we'll see why when we get to the example for this video. So for some problems, it's harder to see that you're making progress towards a solution when doing integration by parts, right? For the last example, this one we had here, the point we had was when I differentiated the x squared, it went down to an x, and eventually one more time will make it go away, and I can see that's going to happen. Well, what happens if you make the wrong choice for u and v? So what happens if I, instead of taking u to be the x squared term, I take u to be the sine of x term? That still seems valid. I can differentiate that, and I can integrate the x squared term. Both of those are totally fine. I can still do those two steps. Well, let's see what happens when I plug this in and see what I get. So if u is sine of x, then du is cosine x dx, and then v is x cubed over 3. So then when I go to do this integration by parts, I get the following. Integral of x squared sine of x dx, which is my u dv, equals u times v minus the integral of v du. And we notice here, this integral did not get any easier. It's actually strictly harder than the one we had before because we went from an x squared to an x cubed. It's going the wrong way, and that's never going to go away if I keep doing this process. Right? I'm going to keep adding powers over and over again I'm never going to get to an answer that I can actually use. So because this integral is more complicated, I know I've gone the wrong direction. It's not going to get me to an answer eventually. So in general, if the integral actually gets strictly harder, that's the wrong move. If it stays the same, you might be okay to solve it out, and that's the example we'll see next. But if it gets harder, then it's probably the wrong step. You may want to try either a different method or a different choice of u and v for your integration by parts. So the main example to talk about here is one like this, e to the x times cosine x. And so this is clearly a product, so it should definitely be an integration by parts problem. So let's go through our rules here. Well, I don't see any inverse trig or any logs. I don't see any polynomials. All I see are exponentials and trig. So I'm allowed to pick whichever way I want for this problem, and you actually can pick either way, and you'll get the right answer. I'll make one choice here. If you pick the other one, you'll still get the same answer at the end, and you'll see why when we get to how we actually solve this problem. So I'm going to pick u to be my e to the x term, and then dv to be cosine of x dx. What does that give me? Well, then I can fill in the rest of my table. So du is e to the x dx, and then v is just sine of x. And now I can do the integration by parts. So integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Now, this new integral we have here didn't get easier. But it also didn't really get any harder either. It's sort of the same as the one we had before, I've just swapped a sine for a cosine. And if you think about how derivatives and integrals work, if I do this one more step, I'm probably going to switch the sine back to a cosine, and that might give me something I can handle here. Now the important thing for these problems, you have to make sure you make the same choice for u and v that you did before. right? I chose u as my exponential before, I need to make u the exponential again here. If I choose it to be the trig function, I will just undo the last step and get something that doesn't help me solve this problem. So this is also a product, so it should, again, be integration by parts. And I need to make the same choice for my u and my dv that I made before in that exponential should still be u, and the trig should still be the v and dv terms. So we're going to make for this integral, u is, again, e to the x, and dv is going to be sine of x dx. I can then fill in the table. So v is a minus cosine, and then du is e to the x dx. And now I can do this integration step one more time. So the thing on the left is still there, equals the e to the x sine of x term still sticks around, and then minus uv minus v du. Now we're going to simplify some signs and redistribute some terms. And so I still get e to the x cosine of x dx on the left. On the right, I have an e to the x sine of x. I have two negative signs here and here to give me a plus e to the x cosine x. And then I have three minus signs in this last term. So I'm going to get a minus integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. And you might think now that we're stuck, right? We're back at the same integral we had before. But this is OK, because it came with a minus sign I can now solve this expression out for the integral I want to solve for. And this is why I usually call these circular problems, because I started with this integral, and I got back to the same integral at the end. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and add it to the other side and then solve that for the integral. So when I add that over, I get two copies of e to the x cosine of x dx equals the same expression we had here before. And I just divide both sides by 2. And then your plus c because it's an indefinite integral. And if you want to check this, you can. If you differentiate this term here, you will get exactly e to the x cosine x. The point is, whenever I get a minus sign, it's going to cancel out a plus sign for somewhere else. And I will get exactly e to the x cosine x if I differentiate this expression. So that's the answer for that problem there with integration by parts. The point here is the problem didn't get strictly easier when I made my first step. However, it did not get harder. It, it was more or less the same difficulty. And because we know that sine and cosine oscillator go back and forth between themselves, there's a possibility of going one more step might then allow me to simplify out the expression to get the answer for this problem. So this is a certain type of problem to keep in mind when you're doing integration by parts problems, that these sorts of things might happen. And you may have to sort of get to the integral you started with and then use the equation you get to solve out for that integral to get what the answer should be to these sorts of circular problems.